washing my hands, sanitizing my stethoscope, and then putting on gloves. Hello, my name is Vanessa. I'll be your student nurse for today. I'm going to be performing an assessment. Is that okay? Yes. And I'm just going to ask you a couple of few questions before we start. When did your sore throat happen? Three days ago. And on a pain scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your pain? Five. And do you ever had shortness of breath before? No. Have you had family history of ear problems? No. And did your limited range of motion happen suddenly or gradually? Suddenly. Okay, can you verify me your name, age, and date of birth? My name is Marlene, July 20, 1962, and I'm 55 years old. So now I will be providing the patient with privacy by closing the curtain. So now on to inspecting the patient's ears. They are symmetrical with no discharge or discoloration shown. I'm going to be palpating the oracle. Do you feel any pain? Yes. And on to the tragus. Do you feel pain? Yes. So the patient shows signs of pain, therefore signs of tenderness. And now I'm going to be doing a hearing test to check her hearing ability. I'm going to be whispering letters and numbers, and you repeat them back to me. 2B6. 2B6. 3R5. So the patient shows no signs of hearing loss, so now I'm going to be evaluating the patient's um, nose and sinuses. Upon inspection, the nose is at the midline, it's symmetrical, there's no crusting, no flaring, and no discharge on the internal and external surfaces. On to palpating the frontal sinuses, do you feel any pain? No. And the maxillary sinuses, do you feel any pain? No. So the patient shows no signs of pain, therefore no signs of tenderness. Moving on to inspecting the patient's mouth and lips, I can see that her lip color is pink with no swelling indicated. Now can you open your mouth for me? I will be using my flashlight and tongue depressor to inspect further. I can see that the gums are a pale color with no lesions present. I can see that her teeth are evenly spaced out. They're white and they're clean. And um, there is no signs of any um, abnormalities. And then can you move your tongue up? I can see that the patient's tongue shows movement and that they're is um, a, it's symmetrical at the midline and it shows no signs of any atrophy but that there's a thin white coating on the tongue indicating possible signs of um, dehydration but there's no signs of any lesions. So then I can see that the hard and soft palate are a normal pink color and that there are red spots on the top of the hard palate but there are no lesions present. So now um, I'm going to be testing out the patient's um, cranial nerve number 9, glossopharyngeal, and cranial nerve number 10, which is the vagus nerve. So I'm going to ask you to um, lift up your tongue and say, ah. ah. I can see that the patient's uh, soft palate and uvula rises to the midline, which means that these findings are normal. So now I'm going to be testing out and assessing the patient's cranial nerve number 12, which is the hypoglossal. So now can you move your tongue from side to side? Okay, I can see the tongue is at the midline. And can you say light tight dynamite? Light tight dynamite. So the patient shows no obvious signs of tremors. Therefore, her um, cranial nerve number 9, 10, and 12 are all intact. So now moving on to assessing the patient's neck, I can see that there is no deformities, no abnormalities. Um, there's no lesions, no scarring, no edema. So on to palpating the patient's neck, I can feel that there's a warm temperature <clears throat> throughout. She has an even skin turgor and that... There's no edema, no scarring, and no tenderness found. Do you feel any pain? No. Okay, so the patient shows no signs of pain, therefore um, no signs of tenderness and no signs of um, thyroid enlargement. So now I'm going to be doing the patient's corroded artery pulse and holding it for one minute. So upon doing this, the patient's um, pulse rate is 80 beats per minute, which means it's regular and um, in the normal. So now I'm going to be testing the patient's uh, spinal accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve 11. So I'm just going to ask you to move your face to the left and now to this side and now shrug your shoulders. So I can see that the patient with resistance of my hand on her chin and on her uh, shoulders that she shows no signs of any muscle weaknesses. Now onto assessing the patient's upper extremities. I can see that um, there's no abnormalities, no um, deviations found, nor um, edema, no swelling. And now onto palpating it, there's an even hair distribution found throughout. And onto palpating the upper extremities, I could feel that there is a warm temperature throughout. She has a nice skin turgor and there's no swelling, no edema found. And onto assessing the patient's capillary refill, I can see that her nail bed is the color pink and therefore um, when pressing onto it, it returns to the normal pink color within two seconds, which this is a normal finding. So now I'm going to be assessing the patient's range of movement in terms of her upper extremities. So just follow what I'm doing. We're going to do the flexion and extension of the fingers. 
flexion and extension of the elbows. And then we're going to be doing the um, uh, flexion and extension of the elbows here. And then the radial and the ulnar deviation of the wrist. And then the shrugging of the shoulders. And then the internal and then the external rotation of the shoulders. Did you feel pain? Okay, so the patient indicates that she feels pain and that she has a limited range of mo uh, motion and that um, she shows no signs of crepitus, but I would rate her uh, muscle strain to be a four out of five. So now moving on to assessing the patient's um, brachial and radial pulse, I'll be holding this for um, one minute. So upon doing this, the patient's um, pulse is 80 beats per minute, which is uh, within the normal range, and that is a normal finding. So now I'm going to be testing the patient's grip strength, so I'm just going to have you to pull on my fingers for me. Okay, so I can feel the force on my hands and that the patient shows no signs of any um, muscle weaknesses. So now I'm going to be assessing the patient's posterior thorax. I'm just going to have you to turn around for me. So upon assessing the posterior thorax, there is an even hair distribution throughout. There's no signs of any swelling, no edema, no scars, no any um, abnormalities or deformities. So on to palpating the patient's upper extremities, I can feel that there's a warm temperature that's evenly distributed. This uh, patient has a nice skin turgor and um, there's no swelling, no scarring, no edema to be found. So now I'm on to oscillating the patient's posterior thorax in all nine areas. So I'm just gonna have you to breathe in deeply when I place the stethoscope onto the surface. Okay, so upon um, also taking the patient's posterior thorax, her um, heart rate is um, 25 breaths per minute, which is irregular and abnormal. And now I'm going to be percussing the patient's posterior thorax. So upon doing this um, for percussing for resonance, the sound is normal and the pitch is low and it is hollow. So now I'm just gonna have you to turn around for me so I can assess your APT ratio. So I'm going to have you to raise your arm like this. Okay, so right here is a one. So her anterior posterior would be rated one. And this is her transverse, which would be a two. So therefore her APT ratio is a one to two, which is a normal finding. So now I'm going to be assessing for the patient's um, respiratory um, heart sounds and this is in the cardiovascular and because of this assessment I'm going to be doing it on top of her clothes. So right now I am in, so can you please um, inhale and exhale every time. So now I am in the right second intercostal space which is the aortic valve. Now I am in the left intercostal space which is the pulmonic valve. And now I am going to the third left intercostal space, which is the herbs point. And then moving on into the fourth left intercostal space, which is the tricuspid valve. And then moving on to the fifth left intercostal space, which is the um, mitral valve. And now that I'm in the mitral valve, I am now going to be oscillating for the apical pulse. And holding this for one minute. So upon doing this, she is breathing about um, 100 beats per minute, which is irregular, and her rhythm is very fast and um, rapid. And the endotitious sounds found is a wheezing sound. This could be indicated of her short breath, and this could be a possible sign of her tachycardia. So now I am going to be washing my hands and giving a view of the room. I am now done with the assessment.